Hi everyone. Uh, so we're going to continue now on our next topic, which is um, discussing Hess's law uh, uh, and specifically how we can use this to calculate um, change in enthalpy delta H of reactions that we uh, don't want to perform in the lab. Okay. So one of the things that uh, I want to bring you back here is is this idea of um, uh, that delta H is a state function similar to delta E. So we talked uh, a while ago about this idea of state function. In fact, at the at the very beginning of this topic, um, and that is a type of function where you don't really care how you get to the final state from the initial state, uh, but what you care about is just what is the value at the initial state and what is the value of the final state and if you take a difference between those two states you get the value of that uh, change in that state function so uh, in the videos where I talked about state function and non-state function I used this as an example which is an example of somebody hiking up a mountain from the bottom to the top of the mountain and that there are two different paths this person can take uh, either the straight uh, path or the zigzag path, the more scenic route. And what we find is that if we're measuring the altitude of the person at the top of the mountain relative to where he's starting from, that number is the same, in this case 10,000 feet, whether you take, um, whether that person took this particular path or whether that person took the longer route, okay? However, the distance traveled is quite different because uh, with the straight path you take 5 miles, with the scenic route you take uh, 12 miles, okay? So then I made the point that a state function is something that uh, doesn't really depend on the path. The value will just depend on the beginning and the end point of that function. Now, I mentioned that uh, state function, examples of state function are delta E, but also delta H, enthalpy. So that's where this uh, concept becomes useful. Going back to this slide where we talk about Hess's law, the idea of Hess's law is that you want to use this uh, state function property of delta H to come up with um, a hypothetical pathway, okay, basically a path that, you know, uh, you, you kind of come up or you create on your own to calculate the delta H of a new reaction based on delta H of existing reactions, okay? So the concept uh, is explained a little bit more in this uh, slide right here in this sentence. And so what I say here is that what this means is if we have a state function like delta H, we don't really need to know exactly which path the reaction takes, okay? So in order to convert from the reactant to product, it might take, you know, 10 different steps, it might take two steps. We don't really care because the delta H of that reaction will just depend on what our starting point is, which is our reactants, and what our final point is, which is our product. As long as we can find um, a series of reactions that will take us from the reactants to the products, whether or not the our reaction actually goes through that particular path that we just designed for it doesn't really matter because what we're calculating is delta H which depends only on the final state product minus the initial state reactant okay so uh, again the, the the point that I just made this is written here as well as long as we start from the same reactants and finish with the same products the delta H we calculate should be the delta H of the reaction of interest, which in this case is what we refer to a lot of times as our target reaction. Okay, okay. so let's do this uh, in terms of uh, an example here. So let's say you have some reaction A uh, going to B and the reaction is, uh, you know, uh, the reactants are A and the, the products are B. Okay, so what you're interested in is just calculating the delta H for this reaction, which is the final product uh, right, the final state minus the initial state, which is the reactants. So you want to know what this number is, okay? But let's say for some reason you can't measure that number, 
okay? Uh, it, it's not really something that you can do directly because either experimental constraints or some issue with the reaction itself. But you would still like to know what that number is because you want to know what's going on between reaction A to reaction B, okay? So, say for example that you know, okay, that A in some other context could be converted to this compound called C, and then C can be converted to this compound B in the end. So in other words, you don't have a reaction where you convert A directly to B, but you know that somebody else has done this reaction where A was converted to C and C was converted to B. And you can measure the delta H of these two steps here, delta H2 and delta H3, either by using your bomb calorimeter or using your coffee cup calorimeter, okay? Um, the idea of Hess's law is the following. Instead of just using, instead of, you know, trying to, you know, wreck your brains to figure out how to do this, measure this delta H1 directly, what we can do is we can just add the values of delta H2 and delta H3 together, and that two, those two numbers added together should be equal to delta H1. And, the, you know, the question is why? Well, the reason is because it's a state function. Because it's a state function, I don't really care what these numbers are, but as long as what I do is take this thing, A, to B in the end, the numbers I get should correspond to exactly the amount of energy it would take from to go from A to B directly, okay? So again, going back to that picture that I showed you earlier on the uh, path, okay? Just remember that whether you take the direct path, let's consider that to be delta H1 in our example just now, and whether you take the zigzag path, the altitude that you calculate is exactly the same, so it doesn't really matter that you do one path or the other one because you get the same number as a result. And this is really the idea of Hess's law. You can do that, you can come up with some hypothetical pathway, and as long as it takes you from what you're starting with to what you're ending with, you're going to get exactly what the delta H would be if you were able to do the experiment yourself. Okay? Now here's another uh, potential pathway here. Let's say instead of the C, you know also that somebody else has done another work where they take A and they convert it to D, and then they take D and they convert it to E, and they take E and they convert it to B. So in this case, if I were to add up all of these delta H's for the intermediate steps, delta H4, 5, and 6 added up together, they should equal to delta H1, okay? So hopefully that's, uh, uh, you know, clarifies the concept of Hess's law. Uh, which is just that you can come up with any kind of, you know, uh, pathway you want to do, right? It doesn't have to be the exact path that the reaction go through. Maybe A goes directly to B during the reaction, but we don't really care as far as delta H calculations is concerned because when we add these numbers together, whether these three numbers or these two numbers, they should add up exactly to be delta H1. So oftentimes, because this forms a cycle, Right? It takes you A to C to B, and then B can go back to A, right? That's a cycle. Here's another cycle right here. The concept of Hess's law is often uh, also called a thermodynamic cycle because you're really trying to create a cycle that takes you from the reactant to the product um, and back to the reactant again. The whole sum should be a zero overall, okay? So uh, most of the time when you're doing Hess's law, you will see that the uh, paths are illustrated in something called an energy diagram, which looks basically something like this. You're going to have your, uh, let's say this is your uh, reactants, uh, CH4 and oxygen, and let's say this is your product. So you want something that takes you from these guys uh, to these guys right here, okay? So a lot of times you'll have this drawn like uh, so in an energy diagram, where this is basically, the axis here is enthalpy, and uh, the enthalpy goes more, you know, bigger and bigger as you go up, just like any y-axis. And so these guys are at higher enthalpy than these guys, okay? So they're less stable, right? Remember, we talked about stability before uh, at the beginning of this topic. So these are less stable than these guys. So if you want to figure out how much energy you would produce as a result of uh, methane combusting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water, you can uh, do it as a direct path. Okay, if you can find that reaction or you can measure it directly. But if you can't, you can try to think about is there other reactions that might help me figure this out? And it turns out that 
if you're able to first uh, convert this to CO2 and H2O gas, so you notice the difference here is the H2O is in the gas form, in this case the H2O is in the liquid form. Say you might be able to measure this path and then you're able to measure the next conversion which is conversion of uh, water from gas to liquid. If you just add these two numbers together, that should equal to this number, okay? So this is what we refer to as an energy diagram. So you'll see a lot of times with Hessel's Law problems, uh, you're going to get these type of energy diagram where you, the reactants start from one side and then the, pro the product is at another side and then you have these multiple arrows illustrating the different paths that you create to take the uh, reactants to the product. 